Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net and welcome to another Shortcuts episode where we provide short, quick tips for everyday After Effects users. Now, this is great because I can create tutorials even when I'm busy working on other things like uh, internet checkers, for example. And uh, I've been playing this for about 15 hours straight and uh, it's a pretty cool game. Um, the only problem I found is that there's only a limited number of responses like good job and good game, good luck. I mean, who says any of that stuff? I mean, I certainly don't. And, uh, you know, I'll be playing along and then I want to say something and it's not on this list. And uh, I just, uh, it gets a little frustrating. Um, so what I found as a good solution is right before I'm about to get beat, I just, uh, I just close the game and uh, then they don't get the satisfaction and uh, it makes me feel better. So here's what we're going to be creating in the tutorial, and uh, I'm going to preview that. Whoa. Kind of like this uh, rapid text and these sparks flying everywhere. So uh, let's go and create a new composition. I'll do uh, widescreen and 300 frames long. Choose OK. By the way, if you hold down Control and click on the uh, time here, you can switch between frames and seconds. So there's a quick tip. Uh, I'm going to go and create a new background solid, and uh, we'll make it black and I'll choose OK. Also, let's create a red solid and we'll make this one uh, blue. Now we'll make it red because it's a red solid. And uh, then we'll uh, take the ellipse tool. I'm going to draw a shape around the bottom here and we'll hit F and feather it out and then hit T and lower the opacity. Even more than that. Okay, then we'll take the text tool and we'll type, uh, I don't know, how about video copilot? All right, that's what I'm talking about. And I'll go ahead and scale this down just a little bit. Now, we're working in 32 bits per channel. And uh, to get there, hold down Alt. And when you click on 8 bits, it turns to 16 and then to 32. I clicked at one time, it was at 128. Although I may have misread. Now, when we're in 32 bits per channel, there's some really cool things we can do to colors inside of our composition. For example, I'm going to select my text layer, click on the color in the character palette. And instead of using white or orange, I'm actually going to use a super bright color. And to do that, we come down here to the RGB and we increase the values beyond white. So white is 111. But we want super bright. So we're going to type 5 and we're going to type 2 and we'll type 1. So this kind of gives you an idea of where the color is. So it's about orange, but it's so bright that it's still white. It's just way brighter than your eyes can handle. Um, and so I'm going to choose OK. Now a quick way to check this is to choose Effect Blur Fast Blur. And when you blur it out, you can see it looks like one of those signs of those places that your friends don't take you because you get all rowdy and you have to get thrown out. So that's kind of a cool way to create neon signs and things. But we're going to go ahead and take it in a different direction. So let's go and animate the text. I'm going to go down. We're going to choose Animate turn on enable per character 3D and then we want to animate the position and add a rotation and then I'm going to create a new 3D camera and we'll make it 20 millimeter and choose OK and then we'll go down to the animation properties for the text and we're going to go and move the Z position really really close to the camera so maybe right around there and we also want to rotate the text as well. So we'll rotate it on the X axis, maybe 90 degrees. And can't see it, but if we go to the advanced range selection, we can change the shape to ramp up. And then if we animate the offset, say from negative 100, we can create a pretty cool effect. So we'll animate it from negative 100, set a keyframe, move forward, and then we'll animate it forward. So there we go looking good and I'll also add a little bit of Y rotation and then we'll turn on the motion blur hit F4 motion blur and then turn it on for the comp so now it's gonna be flying in quick and we can probably move our camera take the uh, the move tool here and just move it up so that the text flies right past the camera we can dolly it in even so that it really flies past it in a hurry and just depending on you know how dynamic you want it to be that's a quick way to do it so now that we have that text in place, let's go ahead and add some sparks. So I'm going to choose a layer, 
new solid. We'll make it uh, orange. Choose OK and OK. Then we'll choose Effect, Simulation, CC Particle World. We're going to set it to Off. We're going to the Options. This comes up this cool window. And we're going to go to the Rendering Options and turn on Force Motion Blur. And then for the Opacity Map, we're going to set it to Fade Out. Choose OK and OK. And then we're going to change the particle type to a lens convex. So we have a cool little spot there. And uh, bring the birth rate down just a bit. And maybe the size down also. So the next step is to animate the particles flying from the left side to the right side. And so what we're going to do is go to the producer. And for the X position, we're going to move it over to the left set a keyframe and then just go over to the right and then slide it over there and so now the particles are going to fly on in that direction now we do want to turn the particle birth rate down to zero set a keyframe move forward one frame and just turn it up just a little bit and then go to the end and turn it down to zero and we can go a frame before that and maybe make it 1.5. And so that way it turns on as it flies and then it stops. Now the particles are being born and they're not continuing the velocity. So we go to the physics, we turn up inherit velocity. And that way as it flies in that direction, the particles will scoot over as well. And I'll turn the size up just so that we can see them a little bit better. And I may want to increase the birth rate to maybe three and set this to yeah, one five looks pretty good okay so now we can see the velocity shooting them over but I want to bring that inherent velocity down just a bit just so it's not as intense and maybe bring the gravity down also I'm also going to increase the velocity and we'll come down here and we'll make the size back to a smaller size and finally I'll choose effect color correction exposure and what's great about this is the exposure effect works in 32 bits per channel and I can just boost it and create super bright looking sparks and then I can add a glow effect stylize glow and maybe bring the intensity down and just so it has a subtle glow to it there now to add some more sparks I'm going to duplicate this particle layer and what I want to do is just go into the settings, bring the velocity inheritance down, and turn up the gravity. And then we want to shut the motion blur off. So we'll go into the options, set the motion blur, uncheck it, OK, OK. And so this just gives us a little bit different looking particles. And we can make them smaller as, as needed. And then we can time it up to our animation of our text. So we'll take these two layers, hold down shift and slide them over. And then we'll go and preview it. So we'll probably want to make them happen a little bit later on towards the end of the animation. We can also slow this animation down by spreading it apart. And the sparks can be also used for other things. And it is all 3D. so. I can fly around this, create some cool camera movements. Um, well, thanks for watching this new Shortcuts episode. Sorry it wasn't that short, but, uh, you know, no refunds. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Andrew Kramer, and uh, I got to get back to work on this, uh, this cover design uh, for this new DVD we got coming out called The Bullet, where we're going to be integrating 3D programs with After Effects. We're going to be using Cinema 4D, 3D Max, and Blender. Blender is a free 3D program you can get from blender.org and we're going to be learning everything you need to know to get this great effect inside of After Effects. So stay tuned for that. It's definitely going to be a lot of fun.